In this video we'll take a closer look at the plans between Watson and Calvert. We will see Station Road's realignment at Quainton and a variety of overbridges and underbridges and also a few alterations to the roads in the area as well as the bat mitigation structure near Sheephouse Wood which is currently in the appeals stage. We'll also take a look at the landscaping and vegetation plans. There's a lot to cover here so let's make a start. The first structure we come to is WAD4 Accommodation Overbridge. The footpath that will use this bridge goes from Blackgrove Road, passes Glebe Farm and then to Wadston. The design of this bridge is very similar to others along the route. We now come to WAD3 Accommodation Underbridge. There's not much to say here, it's just the concrete box where HS2 goes over the top. The lane that uses the underbridge gives access to Wadston Sewage Works. Needles Farm Accommodation Overbridge has the same concrete parapet design as before, but this one has weathering steel plate girders supporting it. We now come to a more complex section at Quainton, with the realignment of Station Road. As you can see here, it bends off to the left there. On the northern section, it joins up with the original Station Road, as it does on the south side as well. We'll also see there's a couple of overbridges, which are Station Road Overbridge and the Aylesbury Link Overbridge, both combined into one structure. We'll now take a closer look at Station Road realignment and those two bridges. It's probably a good idea to pause here and have a look at all the information that's shown on this plan. The red line shows the old route of Station Road, which will be chopped in two and actually stopped up because of the railway going through it. In the top corner there, we can see where the new road will join the old. We'll now take a closer look at Station Road Overbridge and the Aylesbury Link Overbridge, which are all part of one structure. This plan shows the bridges looking from both directions. The design of it looks very much like all the other bridges in that it has concrete parapets. We'll now take a look at some artist's impressions to give some idea of how it will look. They've really gone to town with putting all the foliage in because you can't really see the bridges at all, apart from the concrete parapets that I mentioned before. A bit later we'll have a look at the planting plan for all of this area, as well as the rest of the route covered in this video. The tunnel shown on the bottom left is part of the Buckinghamshire Greenway Cycleway. Construction of this is a long way off and it's not known exactly when it will open, but I imagine it will be after HS2 is finished with. We now leave Quainton and cover the area around Doddershaw and Edgecott. There are four bridges along here, so let's go and have a look at them. The first structure we come to is QUA 28A overbridge. The design of this is very similar to others in that it has uh, steel supports and concrete parapets. We then come to accommodation underbridge QUA 26, which is just to the north of Doddershaw House. Edgecott Road Overbridge is next, and that is one of the largest along here. The bridge is incorporated into the realignment of Edgecott Road. The old road can be seen here highlighted in red. Because the old road is going, this also means the loss of the former Great Central Railway Bridge, which we can see here, just near the new overbridge. The core of the bridge is constructed out of weathered steel girders. Then the reinforced concrete deck slab is placed on top, followed by the concrete parapets, and then the grass verges and carriageway. The bridge is particularly wide to accommodate the network rail link between Calvert and Aylesbury. As of February 2025, when I'm making this video, there is no official plan for this yet, but at least there is provision for it. Before moving on, we come to Adams Accommodation Underbridge. In this next section, we pass through Greatmore, where we see three bridges and the bat mitigation structure, which runs alongside Sheephouse Wood. We start this section with Bridleway QUA 36, Accommodation Green Overbridge. This particular bridge has to be wide enough to take six tracks. Two for HS2, two for Network Rail, and two for Greatmore Sidings. This overhead plan shows how the tracks are spaced out. 
And also you'll notice in the middle, it says back corridor. This green overbridge will be planted with hedges and trees to provide flight lines for the various species of bats in the local area. We now come to GUN 28, green accommodation overbridge. The supporting structure of this is made of weathered steel and has the same concrete parapets as many of the other bridges we've seen. This one differs slightly to the previous one we looked at in that it only has provision for five tracks. So that's two for HS2, two network rail and one for Great Moor sidings. This green bridge will have hedges and trees planted on it and we'll have a look at that later on in more detail. So stick around for the end of the video. We now come to CAG2 underbridge and the Sheephouse Wood Bat Mitigation Structure, otherwise known in the media as the Bat Shed. The underbridge actually forms part of the main structure, as you will see here. The footpath that connects with Three Points Lane, which I've marked here in red, will pass through this underbridge. The superstructure comprises three principal elements, a reinforced concrete plinth, an array of concrete arches springing from this plinth, and lightweight rigid perforated panels spanning between the arches. These two artists' impressions give some idea of how the structure will look when it's finished. The top one shows it just after completion, and the bottom one shows it as it would look a few years afterwards. We now reach the final section covered in this video, before the line intersects with East West Rail, and there are three overbridges to cover here. The first structure we come to is SCL 13 Green Overbridge. This is integrated into the northern part of Sheephouse Wood Bat Mitigation Structure. In this overhead plan we can see the Bat Mitigation Structure on the bottom there, and at the top we can see the two pairs of tracks, which at this point are starting to be spaced apart more, because we're approaching the part where the tracks curve to join the east-west rail line. These views give a good idea of how the bridge will look. We can see the style of bridge is very much similar to other ones we've seen, with those concrete parapets. School Hill Green Overbridge is the last structure on this section. This is a wider bridge, as it has to incorporate HS2's tracks, one of which is for the maintenance depot, and to the right are the network rail lines. Here are some artists' impressions of how the bridge will look. So that's a general look at all the plans. We'll now take a look at what's planned for the landscaping. So we'll start just outside Quainton, between the Wadston Sewage Works on the right there, and Buckinghamshire Railway Centre up on the left. This first image shows where the wildflowers and grassland will be planted, and the next one shows the trees, hedges and shrubs that will be planted. It's quite a diverse mix of native species. And this is how the area looked before. We now come to the station road area around Quainton. Here we can see the new station road curving around to the left and going off up to the north there. This shows the wildflower and grassland mixes and also the mixes for the ponds. And here we see the hedgerows and trees marked out. Uh, with a variety of species included. That's quite a massive change from what was there before. Moving further on we come to the Doddershall area and this is the diagram showing all the grassland mixes and all the hedgerows and woodland areas. And here is how it looked before. We now reach the Edgecott Road area, where we can see the new alignment curving its way diagonally across the screen there with HS2 going across. There are a lot of new areas of woodland around this bit. And that is very evident when you look at how it was before. We now reach the area around Great Moor Power Station. And this is the grassland mixes shown here. 
and now the woodland and hedgerows. And here is how it looked before. We now reach Sheep House Wood and the bat mitigation structure. This shows the plans for the wildflower grassland mixes. And now the woodland mixes and hedgerows. And how the area looked before. This is the area around Calvert Green. It is here that the two railway lines split. As we move further towards East West Rail, which is out of view to the left. We'll take a look at that in a while. So we've lost a little bit of woodland on the right there, as you'll see from this view of how it looked before. We now reach the final section, which shows East West Rail on the left there. So that's the grassland mix and now we've got the woodland and hedgerows. And how everything looked before. Well I hope you found all that useful. I certainly have. This video would make an ideal companion to the HS2 updates that I do for Wadston to Quainton and from Quainton to Calvert. Those can all be found in the HS2 updates playlist.